what happens if what happens if, if we actually do have to maybe pay reparations? Understand that everything, everything, that beautiful capital in Washington, D.C., was built by slave labor. The majority of the churches in this country were built by slave labor. Our forefathers were lazy. Here we are in the 21st century. Yeah. And these fools still trying to build up color in the earth. That's right. Forget about your skin. Yeah. Forget about your color. Forget about the color, how white you are, how brown or how dark or how whatever. Repent of your sins. Hallelujah. And be baptized. Every one of you. Hallelujah. In the name. Every one of you. Hallelujah. In the name. People, well, I don't know. We ain't saying nothing about them. We love everybody. You stupid as I read it again. Deliver me, O oh Lord, from the evil man. Deliver us, Lord, from the evil man, the white man. Go ahead. Preserve me from the violent man. Preserve me from the violent man. You don't get no more violent than the white man. Right. He didn't vote against this country. He didn't do a democracy against this country. He conquered and enslaved and killed to take what he wanted. He's the violent man. Go ahead. Which imagine mischiefs in their heart. They sit around and imagine mischiefs in their mind. Come on. Continually are they gathered together for war. If there's no war, guess what white folks do? We're going to make a war. That's what they do. Read it again. Which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. See? They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. For example, oh, we need some trigger words to get people to shut up. You're anti-Semitic. Or oh, you spoke the truth of the Bible? You hate speech, hate, 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 and get up. Hey, hate, hate these people, hate them. That's what it's going into. Read it again. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Yeah, you're not God's chosen people. You're niggas and spicks. Go ahead. Adders. Poison is under their lips. That is poison is under their lips. That's their religions, their politics. Go ahead. Selah. Read. Keep me, O Lord, from the hand of the wicked. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Read. Preserve me from the violent Lord, man. preserve us from the violent man. Who have purpose to overthrow my goings. Y'all see that part right there? Who have purpose to overthrow my goings. That's their purpose. To overthrow the 12 tribes of Israel. That's their goal. So Esau... You violated the Earth's lease agreement and you have a faith deficit. Also, I may add that you've been deceived by the father of lies, Satan, Lucifer, who's on Lake Row. So your rent is past due, Esau. The books have to be balanced. You have an outstanding sin debt. Number one, the prophecy and generational curse of Esau selling his birthright. For a morsel of food, you have to pay for that. Why? Because Job chapter 21 verse 19 says that God lays up his iniquity for his children. Okay, they lie down alike, verse 26. They lie down alike in the dust and worms cover them. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 9 says pretty much the same thing. He visits the iniquity of the father onto the third and fourth generations up to the third and fourth generations okay no man can outlive his sins so they have to be passed down to his children i mean we see the same thing with the curse of adam and eve that was perpetuated throughout the generations for six thousand years and still is going to this day okay Secondly, again, the outstanding sin debt was never paid to those whom you held captive. And Revelation chapter 13, verse 10 says, he who led in the captivity, he will go into captivity. And he who killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. You have to pay for the sin debt. Number three, you inherited the sin debt of the earth. And breaking that lease agreement because the scriptures imply that your people will be in power when Christ returns. So these Gentile nations would have provoked the coming of our Lord and provoked him to collect vengeance. And in his word, he told you to sell everything you own and give it to the poor. So when Christ destroys the earth, he's destroying your kingdom. That's why he said he's coming like a thief in the night. It's going to be suddenly. 
sudden death when they say it's peace. The fourth thing you must understand is Esau, the Gentiles, the Edomites, the Moabites, all of these Gentile nations. You would not have even known the gospel if not for the Hebrews, uh, the judges, whom their, their faces you cover up. Okay, the Apostle Paul was raised as a Roman citizen, a Benjamite who was converted so that you may hear the gospel. King Solomon prayed that God will accept you in the book of First Kings, I believe. He prayed that God would accept the foreigner who is not of the covenant of Yah. Christ himself was a Hebrew black man. Okay, he was persecuted by the Romans, who was a, a racist dominant society in that time. Okay, the fifth thing you must understand is God's code of conduct. I mean, the Most High said, you reap what you sow, and he will not be mocked. Whatever man reaps, he shall sow. His word says, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. We saw this in the story of the rich man and Lazarus. He also said to whom much is given, much is required. And again, the sins of the father are visited up to the third and fourth generations onto the children. Okay. But the latter generation gets it worse than the beginning. Okay. Because the multiplication of sin, the accumulation of sin throughout the generations increases the sin debt. Uh, uh, the scriptures say that Esau is the end of the world and Jacob the beginning of that that follow. Okay, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. But God does not judge a matter speedily, so you must read the judgments, the book of Obadiah, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Joel, uh, the book of Enoch, and the book of Esther. The sixth thing you must understand is faith deficit. Okay, for 4,000 years, you were not even a part of the tree and its roots that produced the natural branches. So be very afraid, lest Satan exploits this disadvantage against you. Okay, the advantage that you do have is that you're over the wealth and over the economies and over the militaries and this dispensation. That's the blessing from God. That's the blessing of Esau. Because remember, in uh, Genesis 27, I believe, it says that uh, uh, Esau will live in the fatness of the land and he will live by the sword. Catch that Esau was red and hairy. The truth shall set you free. <laughs> I leave you with this. The truth shall set you free. Again, what are the greatest lies that Satan has told and how many people will perish due to them covering the faces of the judges thereof? Sin is incredibly expensive, okay? Christ's bloodshed is the down payment for our sins, okay? Living right and worshiping him in spirit and truth, that's what gets you in as a tenant of eternal heaven. But you got to pay your rent and you got to repent. And notice the word rent is in that word repent, okay? Because the Most High is going to balance the books. That's what the day of judgment the day of the Lord is all about. But Christianity has lied and misled people into believing that it's going to be rapture and we're all the same and we're all going to be the body of Christ. No, you got to pay your dues. All right. So there's your invoice. I'm just a mailman sent to deliver.